Every year I run into the same issue. I want to grow more food, but living in a concrete jungle, I have limited access to open land. My other options are a raised bed and containers, but the cost of those can rise very quickly. This video is going to give us some really interesting ways in which we can grow both on concrete and lawns for less. Hello plant people, how are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name is Ashley and I'm a soil scientist. On this channel, I like to take that science and apply it to all things plants. In today's video, we're going to be looking at how to produce more food in a small area. So it is no surprise as someone who is completely obsessed with plants, both indoors and out, that I would want more space to grow said plants in. But I've always run into the same issues over and over again. And that factor is the cost of soil. Raised bed soil has to be purchased in a large volume. You don't want to cheap out in this department because you may end up with weeds, disease, or a poor soil, which will make your gardening experience miserable. So I'm sitting here currently looking at Home Depot's website just to see if I can confirm exactly what I think every single spring is the cost of soil containers is very expensive. So even if I wanted to do a raised bed, I would need to order the soil in, which can cost big bucks. If I wanted to do a container garden, which wouldn't give me as high of yields, I would run into the same issue where I have to buy the containers themselves along with potting soil rather than actual soil soil. So now my price escalates even farther. Once upon a time, I used to think I could use rubber maids or simple plastic containers, buckets, things that are reusable. However, I have found over the years that they tend to deteriorate and fall apart, especially when we're looking at reusing rubber maids and things of that nature. I only really get two years, mostly because of our Canadian winters that cause the cracking and the freeze thaw cycle, which ultimately compromises the container itself. I've even gone to the extremes of looking at setting up a vertical wall using eaves troughs and the costs are always incredibly high. Now behind me here is my front lawn and this is an area that I've always wanted to put a garden in. However, it's very heavy clay soil. It has weed issues and it receives very intense sun, which means lots of watering. I've always hesitated away from actually putting a garden in this place because I don't want to disrupt the flow of my neighborhood by putting something unsightly in the area. So when I say unsightly, I mean things like weeds getting out of control or piles of dirt. And then to top it all off, I was recently in a car accident, which has actually hurt my back and my shoulder to the point that heavy lifting or doing anything of that nature is very, very difficult. This means container gardening has just gotten that much more difficult for me this year. And and that is where today's sponsor comes in. So Garden Socks is a product that was sent to me. I will leave a link down below. There is a ton of different options and how you want to style this, but you can get, essentially you can get a four by four or a four by eight, or you can combo the two together to get hybrid. What exactly are Garden Socks? And you guys, these ultimately i think were made famous by the kiss the ground documentary over on netflix there was that organic farmer and he had these big lumps on the ground filled with compost and what he was using he wasn't using soil he was using straight compost inside of the garden socks so this is the exact same setup that you see on kiss the ground the nice part about the garden socks is that they can ultimately go anywhere meaning they can go on cement they can go on cardboard they can go on the front lawn they can even go around the base of a tree that has no soil and is just mostly roots where typically you would not be able to grow anything and even putting a container in that area is near to impossible because it is an uneven surface so this is a cool concept. The other nice part about this is we do not need level ground. We can have rocky ground, we can have uneven ground, and the sock is just going to form to the area around it. For me having current back issues, I'm not gonna set up the entire setup, but I do wanna show you how if you have a limited mobility, this can benefit you as well. If I would've gotten this setup before my car accident, this would've been a huge life saver 
saber because I wouldn't be having to weed at all. The weeds have officially taken over my garden since my accident, but I wouldn't have to weed with this setup and my watering actually be much, much easier too because it is using drip irrigation. So let's go outside and look at how to fill these and exactly how these work. So this here is the secret weapon of the garden sock and all this is is a nylon material that we fill with soil. This is a 50 foot roll, but the rolls come in various different sizes. There's a 25 foot roll as well. And you can shape this however you want. The key here is that you want to keep the lengths around three feet. The reason being is because we don't want it to split if the soil ends up freezing and expanding too much due to the water. So we do want to keep it around three feet. It's just more manageable that way. Now this isn't nylon in the sense of like nylon stockings. This is much, much heavier duty. Uh, stuff so keep that in mind I initially thought like oh what kind of nylon is this but this is very very heavy duty so what you want to do is you want to measure out three feet of this sock and then we want to give it a snip so now we want to actually put a knot in just one end of the sock and you want to make sure the knot is got enough tail on it that it won't pull out because this is going to be near to impossible to fix if you don't you know make a big enough knot at the end if there's soil inside so that is what it looks like and we have a little knot there now we're actually going to use the cone it comes in and is shipped in for the actual filling process so i'm literally going to put my knot through here and then i'm going to just fold it over the sides like a garbage can one of my initial worries was the actual durability of this product. And let me tell you, my worries are gone. This stuff is really thick and actually pretty intense. I see no reason why it wouldn't survive a Canadian winter to be replanted again. As well, once it's in place, it's unlikely that you're going to move it. So there's no real maintenance when you compare it to a container garden, for example. Okay, so future Ashley here. This is King. He's a pit bull and his brother is also a pit bull. And they were outside playing tug of war with the garden socks. They stood up just fine. I'm honestly surprised. Okay, so they're a heck of a lot tougher than we initially thought, but nonetheless, they will survive just fine. So these garden socks here are being filled with potting soil, and that is because they are going to be a part of an indoor gardening video that I'm doing. If you're placing these outdoors, I highly recommend just using a compost, a manure, or an actual soil. There's a lot of added aeration here. So in an outdoor setting, the added pure light and porosity of a peat-based uh, mix isn't going to make the difference. Ultimately, using a peat-based soil may work against you due to the extra aeration. You may find that you're watering way too often. Because I'm using a peat moss, it also is a little bit lighter, making it a little bit easier for my back. The compost manure soil one that's going in the front yard is actually going to be set up by Bob because I physically can't do the other one. But this is really not that much weight. It's not very difficult to do. And limited mobility wise, it's completely reasonable. Okay, so uh, this is the irrigation side of things, which is also very, very cool. There's a regulator valve on the irrigation system for the garden socks that regulates the water to 10 PSI. And the reason for this is so that it can keep the water tape full and emitting water without blowing any ends off or losing any connection in your fittings, which is important because repairing this or changing this or altering it in any way, obviously you're going to have to disassemble your entire setup. So this is the water tape and then these are the fittings that you can use. So this here is the fitting that comes directly off of that regulator. So this regulator here, and the reason why these two are separated is because you can place a timer between the two, the regulator and the actual uh, connection. So these two would go together if you don't have the regulator. And then it has a hose barb on the end and you would simply just slip your irrigation tape over top of that hose barb and then you would run it to your garden socks. Now the tape itself has a blue line on it and you want your blue line to be facing down because every six inches on this there is a hole and in that hole is where the water comes from 
Now, when it comes to setting up the tees or uh, linking these all together, all you're really doing is every T is a sock. So this is like your main branch coming across. So you would obviously have um, garden tape connecting between each sock, but then going down the row, you just have it coming off of this end, going down this way. And then to close off the end is you're just going to double kink it and then you can tape it or fasten it in any way. You could even uh, probably heat shrink wrap it if you wanted to make it look really neat and tidy. But because it's under such low pressure, we're not going to end up blowing any ends off because there's no strain on the tape itself. The thing is, is it comes in one giant roll, meaning if you choose to not put your garden socks in say you know a perfect square a perfect rectangle and you wanted one giant line or if you wanted a circular pattern or something crazier in nature maybe you want to spell out some letters it's all possible then you can just not clip it and you would just link it together as needed so you come up with the adequate number of t's depending on how wide you go so if you just want a two foot by say four foot, then you would get two tees. If you want four feet wide by four feet long, you would get four tees, if that makes sense. So for every row, you get one tee, and then you're always going to get your regulator and then obviously your hose connection to the hose and then to the actual uh, tape itself. When it comes to positioning the actual water tape itself inside the sausage is you just clip a hole on either end and then you run it through the center, connecting all your sausages together and clumping it on the one side. When it comes to planting, you're actually just going to plant on either side of that irrigation channel. How cool is that? Really simple to do. Now, when we're choosing soil type or crops to go into the actual garden socks, we need to actually do these together. If the intent is to put heavy feeders in it, such as tomatoes, cucumbers, brassica species, then we want to add manure or compost, but we also want to add a slow release granular fertilizer in the form of organic or conventional. The choice is up to you. Now, you can put lesser feeding crops in place, and because these garden socks are above ground, if you are in a colder climate, such as myself here in zone three, we can actually extend our growing season and ultimately get into the yard sooner because we don't have to wait for the entire ground to thaw or for our containers to thaw. These socks being black are going to thaw much quicker, meaning we're gonna be able to put our plants out much sooner. Ultimately, we're going to have to protect from frost, but overall, it's going to give us a little bit of a head start. Like I said, if you guys want to grab these socks, then be sure to check out the link down to below. I want to thank the company that sent these to me so, so very much, uh, Rojatex. The company's awesome, you guys. I got in my car accident. They knew about my car accident, and they said, totally relax about the video. Like, do not worry about it. Do not stress and I had the intent of actually doing this at the beginning of August because I wanted to have this available for anyone that wanted to do like a fall planting season or get this set up this year to be available for next year but unfortunately that did not happen and they were totally cool with it so very very good Canadian company as well. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and let me know in the comments down below what your favorite method for putting gardens in odd places may be, and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye!